how are we doing people it's next here with a bonus midweek game of theories in today's video i'm going to name my top five most wicked and cruel villains that we've ever seen on a game of thrones and i'm gonna top it off with a finale prediction of who i think will be the show's all-time greatest evil now then let's check out this list of evil bastards Game of Thrones has gifted us with some of the most breathtaking scenery, visually stunning CGI, beautiful women from all over the world, and legendary skilled warriors to ever grace our TV screens. But personally, one of my favourite things about the show has to be the awesome notorious villains with their truly evil and sadistic portrayals. So, first on the list... Carl Tanner from Gin Alley, drinking wine from the skull of Gior, fucking Mormon. The fucking legend from Gin Alley, Carl Tanner. Now, obviously, he's not one of the bigger hitters that you'll see on this list, but I think they did a really good job with this small time villain, given that in the books of A Song of Ice and Fire, it wasn't Tanner who led the mutiny at Crass's Keep. You can tell that through Carl Tanner, the show wanted to demonstrate to us how the Night's Watch really was made up of shady characters, rapists, thieves and murderers, and adding that touch of class to his character definitely helped bring out that darker side. Although his reign is short-lived, he had so many awesome scenes, especially his opening introduction. You are a bastard. A daughter fucking wildling bastard. <laughs> then, by the time that we see him again in season 4, he makes the old crasses keep look like a holiday inn. It's so brutal what's happening there, it's almost a little uncomfortable to watch. That is, until you see him reveling in his badass glory, drinking wine out of Mormont's freaking skull. Goodness knows how things would have turned out for Bran and Mira and co had it not been for Jon Snow leading the Avenging Pie. And even then, there was a moment where Carl could have killed Jon had it not been for one of Crass's wives. Showing no remorse at number 4. And when we drive our swords through our enemies' hearts, may we speak the words of our alliance. The Freys and the Lannisters send their regards. Wedding planner of the year, Walder Frey. Oathbreaker? Pedophilia? Kingslayer? Is there anything this disgusting little weasel isn't capable of? The warning signs for Rob Stark were there from the very beginning. His trusted advisors doubted the Freyos' loyalty as Tully Bannerman. Catelyn herself even volunteered to go and bargain with Walder to ensure Rob's safety and to secure passage through the twins. And during their discussions, he openly admits how little he thinks of the oaths he sworn to other houses. Not to mention, we're gifted with what is arguably the creepiest line of dialogue ever. You see that? Fifty inches. A little flower. And the honey is all mine. <laughs> Walder Frey had an infamous reputation of switching his allegiances to the side that was winning, and unfortunately for Rob Stark, he handed him the perfect excuse to orchestrate the Red Wedding. The way it was executed was so deadly and swift, and to target his unborn child to initiate the massacre was just horrific. In the end, though, Walder's arrogant and domineering character showed to be nothing more than a front as he was exposed by Arya Stark as a coward. His assassination was long overdue, but it was well worth the wait after first seeing him chow down on his sons. Burning things to the ground at number three? Marjorie will dig her claws in, you will dig your claws in, and you'll fight over him like beasts until you rip him apart. I will burn our house to the ground before I let that happen. The Mad Queen Cersei Lannister. Where do I even begin? Right from the get-go, it has been clear what kind of woman she's going to be, and shit, Lena Headey take her bow. 
Her performances have been legendary. So much so, that when I was watching 300 recently, I found myself actually hating on her role as Queen Gorgo. She's responsible for the deaths of so many key players on the show, and her political games in the capital have completely reshaped Westeros. She plotted the downfall of King Robert Baratheon, her manipulation of the Kingsguard snowballed the chain of events that nearly wiped out the Starks, and she literally just blew up the Tyrells. Almost all of her actions are a product of revenge, selfishness or jealousy, and potentially topping them all is the scene just before she's crowned queen where Cersei is seen getting her vengeance against Scepter Unella. The manner of which could not have been more callous and vicious. Sir Gregor. This is Sir Gregor Clegane. He's quiet too. Your gods have forsaken you. This is your god now. Close, but choking it at number two. <coughs> it's nothing. <sighs> A right royal prick, Joffrey Baratheon. I've never had someone smile infuriate me as much as his does. He reminds me of an eclipse. You don't want to look at him directly, but at the same time, you can't just stop watching him. He has been without a doubt the most cruel, sadistic and tyrannical ruler of his time and it is so painful to watch how much he enjoys the agony of others. His wildly unpredictability and lust for torment was undoubtedly the recipe of a psychopath. Very much like his mother, only what made him so scary was his naivety, impulsiveness and how little restraint he had emotionally. Any one of his moments could have resulted in some form of animalistic act of violence. Obviously, Tyrion and Sansa suffered extensively at his hands, but poor Ross ended up becoming his experimental plaything, where she was strung up and used for target practice. He might not have killed as many people as his mother, but there is no telling what kind of man he might have developed into. Hunting down that number one spot? You made Miranda feel jealous. I'm really jealous of her. I love me. You can see that your presence has become a bit of a problem. <laughs> so pretty now. Lucifer himself, Ramsay Bolton. Being the product of rape and the son of Ruth Bolton was never going to have a happy ending. But who could have guessed how much of a sociopath he would have turned out to be? He's like Joffrey, but on steroids. And not only does he like torturing and killing innocent people for no reason whatever, he's actually really damn good at it. In fact, Ramsay is so good that he was able to physically abuse and mindfuck someone so deep that they became another person. Jesus. And it's harrowing how desensitized he's become to all of it. I mean, when he's telling his father about skinning and flaying Lord Kerwin, he doesn't even stop eating. His savagery is so far off the scale that he has no hesitations about killing Roos and feeding his baby brother and fat world afraid to his hounds. For me, what makes Ramsay stand out as the most evilest and ruthless villain is how calculated his plans are and his ability to read people. We saw it time and time and time again, where he would anticipate his opponent's move and manipulate them into falling right into his traps. And since becoming a dog's dinner, he's left us with a void that needs to be filled. So who's up to the task of filling Ramsay's boots? 
Cersei looks a safe bet after seizing the Iron Throne and beating Daenerys to the title of the Mad Queen, but I think that's just too easy. Well, my prediction is that Euron Greyjoy will not only live up to the expectation, but he will surpass it on every level. In the two scenes he's been in, he killed his own brother and seized the Salt Throne, and he would have killed Yara and Theon too if he got his hands on them. Whilst many people could argue what can possibly be left for him with only two seasons to go, I think the complete opposite. Why would you introduce such a big character unless he had a big purpose? If you think he's a possibility, then I suggest you check out my Ice Dragon theory. Perhaps you think Cersei will be the one who continues to impose her malice on the Seven Kingdoms. Or do you advocate that the Night King will be the most evil and greatest terror that the realm will ever have to face? I really hope that you guys enjoyed my top 5. Let me know in the comments below who would have been in your list and why. Also, let me know if you agree with my predictions about Euron, and if not, then I want to know how you think he's going to meet his demise. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take it easy.